Test, test, test. Check, okay. check, check one, two. Mike Agarbo here. I've got fellow app nerds Graham Williams and John Beeler. Hey, guys. Hello. Hello. We've got uh, an awesome show. Again, this show is uh, all about uh, mobile technology and the world of apps uh, when it comes to smartphones, tablets, TVs, even cars now. My Tesla has apps. Of course it has apps. I love it. I love it. Uh, so in today's show, a little bit of hacking we're going to be talking about. Uh, if you uh, have subscribed to Disney+, Plus, you should probably know that uh, thousands of Disney Plus accounts have been hacked, I guess, Whoops. and put up for sale by hackers. We will also be talking about an Android camera flaw. If you have an Android phone, you really, really need to listen to this program. We're going to tell you how uh, this uh, affects your phone and your camera and uh, what you can do about it. And uh, Google rolls out a new Your News Update service for Google Assistant. It's kind of like uh, Alexa flash briefings. Yes. It's cool. It's very cool. So we'll talk about uh, how that works and how you can get going with it. So let's talk about some of the app news uh, this uh, week. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been reading about the uh, the whole uh, SIM swap scam uh, still continuing to happen. Maybe you can explain in simple terms how this works, John. <sighs> <laughs> no, no, I can't. Basically what happens is uh, when you um, click on a link, answer a text message, those types of things, uh, it gives people the ability to, to know that they've, uh, A, got the right place, and maybe have some insight into your uh, credentials. What do you mean the right place? You mean you? Yes, yeah, like you. Like okay, so these are random emails and texts sent to you. Yes. Okay. So basically, you're a fish on the line yes. to that hacker. Got it. So you click that link, they know you're there. Right. Yeah. Got a live one. And a live one. And depending on how sophisticated the particular fish is, uh, what happens is it could bring your cookie uh, browser data forward, any kind of credentials, Anything to give them permission to go in and start looking at things like, okay, well, we've got your SIM, we've confirmed that we've got Mike's phone number. Yes. Let's figure out how we can port that number somewhere else. Once they do that. Oh, they, what do you mean port that number somewhere else? Well, essentially your phone's going to stop working. Why? Because the hackers have found a way through the credentials that you've either, you've shared with them by clicking that link. That's a loaded link when you click it. Yeah. Right. Um, they take that information. They'll call up Rogers and say, hey, I'm Mike Agarbo. Cancel my account or change it to this uh, SIM, SIM card. Okay. And then now you can't do anything on your phone that requires SMS uh, uh, confirmation, like the two-factor yep. auth authentication. So I can go in and I can reset your password on your Visa. So, for example, you get a link that says, you know, click here to redeem your gift card or to get a prize. And you go to a website and they now know your phone number is accurate. They but get you, don't, you don't even have to type anything in. You just got to click that link. In some cases, yeah. yeah. In other cases, you know, the, the phishing attempt will try to pull more information out of you. Now, this is a, a failure on a number of different points, right? Yeah. You know, there's a technological failure in that the the methods that they're using to grab this information, they're making us vulnerable. The other one is the sociological impact, right? And so this is social hacking, yeah. uh, social engineering. And that is where they call Rogers or they call Bell or they call Telus, uh, and they do a really, really good job of convincing the person on the other end of the line that they're you. Um, now, there, there are things in place to try to prevent this, right? We've got security questions. How much was the bill on your last bill? You know, can you confirm your postal code, which is probably the weakest thing on the yeah. planet? Um, or or uh, the code that we sent you in an email. Well, I now have access to your email, too. So I can see that. Yeah. So, so the idea is that they don't care about having your number. They want to get that so that they can reset all your passwords for online banking and, and things. Yeah, because typically, it's probably one, like Graham said, it was one of the the worst <laughs> ways of authenticating you. SMS two-factor authentication. Yes. So where they send you a text message, you know when you log into something, it's like, we sent you a text. Put that six-digit code in, it lasts for 90 seconds. Yeah. Right, well, in that window, they grab that, that code because it's now being texted to them because they've taken control of your number and now they're accessing your bank account, your credit cards, all that sort of good stuff. Yeah, and I've had uh, at least one friend that had a major, you know, um, identity theft issue as a result of this happen. And there was a recently an article of someone in Toronto that was taken for ten thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars because ten thousand dollars. Yeah, because they they basically reset her phone, got into her Visa, and they went shopping. 
Good God. So what can we d- tell people to do to avoid this? Don't click on any links. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you know, and it's hard because yeah. they, these things are quite sophisticated. They do a really good job of copying everything that you would expect to see in those emails. But quite often there, there'll always be one little breadcrumb that'll be like a red flag. So just make sure you look at everything first before you click anything that looks suspicious. Yeah, I mean, in iOS, they have the ability to block out unknown callers and unknown senders. You can do that in Android as well. Um, And so, you know, in my text list, if I don't have your number in my contact list, it goes into this bucket of messages. Now, you'll still see a little one there. uh, So you can read those texts. And I have had people who I haven't had in my phone, but be like, hey, it's so-and-so. You know, I've got your number off your business card and I'm I'm texting you here. And that's great. But to your point... um, if there is a link in those things, um, it's probably beneficial for you not to be visiting those links, especially if it comes from somebody that you don't know. Yeah. And any bank or large institution will probably have that you have an account with will have some messaging system built into that as well. So they're not going to email you telling you something's really wrong with your account. They're probably either going to call you, which again, you should be cautious of those calls, but log into the account. Don't click on the link. Just type in yourbanknamecom and go there and log into your account and see if they've actually sent you a message because they'll probably have that in that messaging system for those types of accounts. I, I'm with TD and they do have that functionality there. So even the app is actually a good place because those tend to be fairly secure. Yeah. So go to the app. Moral of the story, don't click on a link, go to the app. Yeah. Sometimes if, I, if I'm if i not quite sure if the link is legit or not, I'll open it up in an incognito window. So at least it's not bringing anything with it. Good call. But yeah. let's uh, talk about packages. Packages. It's Christmas time. It's <laughs> Black Friday. You're probably getting a lot of stuff delivered. Yeah, I've actually got a slip on my desk right now that says, come get this after one o'clock tomorrow because tonight would be too convenient. So you have a, a new app that helps you track all of your packages. Yes. So I, I've actually been using a couple of different apps for this uh, for a little while. There's one called Deliveries for iOS, uh, which is quite good. But this new one, uh, Root, is apparently even smarter. So what it does do is it actually connects to a, a variety of different services to see when you have tracking numbers coming in and automatically adds them. How does it know? Because uh, it, it actually can tell from the, the type of the number that's there. So all of your different providers, Canada Post, uh, FedEx, UPS, Purolator, they use a type of code that's consistent between all of their packages. Okay. And so we can see, you know, that number right there is probably is it a seeing package. in your email? In your email. Um, you can also get it to, uh, to watch your text messages as well um, as part of this app. And it's able to harvest all that data and put all of that in one place so you can see where all of your packages are at once. That's kind of handy. Yeah, it is handy. Yeah, because I, I get uh, a lot of stuff delivered from different carriers. Yeah. yeah. We get a lot of stuff at the office just from all kinds of different places and companies too. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, again, I've used deliveries with UPS, with DHL. And, uh, you know, with those ones, I can copy and paste those in and it will automatically recognize where they're from. Um, it, it's funny, actually, because, I mean, occasionally you buy things from retailers here in Canada and they ship from China. Uh, and there's only one uh, app tracker that I know that, that tracks those. And that's uh, one called 17 net and it's uh, 17 track, pardon me. And it, it tracks those packages until they hit the Canadian shore at which point Canada post takes over. Well, cool. Uh, let's talk about Facebook. I don't like to, but let's talk about them anyway. <laughs> Their latest like experiments. Facebook. Oh, well I use it all the time. You actually. do. I know. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> You're addicted. I'm, just, I'm addicted and I love all the pictures. And everyone telling me uh, what political party I should be with. <laughs> yes. It's the, the kitten political party, I think, is really the one that I That's my to. favorite. Yeah. Uh, they have a new meme creation app. This, is, uh, this one feels a lot like, you remember uh, Billy Madison uh, when Steve Buscemi shows up and he's like, hello, fellow kids. This is what this feels like to me a little bit. <laughs> it's Facebook. Hello, fellow kids. We've got your memes. Uh, this is a meme creation app. Isn't there like a million of these? Yeah. This one's called Whale. Okay. Uh, just because. And what? And it's a whole separate app. Yes, it is. Why? Um, you know, well, and, and this is the thing. Facebook is desperate right now to reach out to that younger audience that is looking at Facebook and going, okay, boomer. Uh, they're, they're, they're really <laughs> looking at this space and going, I don't feel like I'm at home here. Um, and so Facebook was terrified it was losing them to the Snapchat. And it kind of has lost a few of them to And the TikTok. The Snapchat. But TikTok actually has been the big one. Another one of our friendly social media apps owned by a giant Chinese conglomerate. Um, but uh, this, is, this is really their way of trying to hook kids in. Uh, Instagram being, you know, this very visually focused 
uh, app. And so the creation side of that, the, the memes that we see popping up uh, on a variety of different social channels being used to communicate in Discord and things like that, uh, they want people to make more of their own memes. And if you've seen a lot of uh, memes out there that people make on their own, there are meme generator websites, right? So you see these funny images and people are adding their own captions to it and whatnot. Um, and so this is a way for uh, them to access this audience of, we're going to make memes. Uh, you know, they, the goal here I think is to reach a younger audience, but let's face it, the biggest consumer and producer of memes our, our boomer audience. You know, the one bright side out, out of all of this yes. is that it's probably protecting us from being invaded by aliens. Because <laughs> I'm sure aliens come along to Earth and kind of tie into our communication networks and see all this crap and go, no, let's just move along. There's the, these, there's, these creatures are idiots. There's the Will Smith equivalent of the alien going, oh, hell no. And they're just, <laughs> they're out of here. <laughs> okay. Did you sign up for Disney Plus? Did you guys? Yes. Did you guys? Well, yeah, yeah. the good news is Days after the launch, thousands of uh, Disney accounts have been hacked oh, and are being joy. sold on the dark web for between three to eleven dollars each. This is this is why we use a strong, unique password for every service we sign up for. Say it with me: strong, unique password for every. Anyway, when we come back from the break, if you are a Disney Plus subscriber, you need to stay tuned because we're going to tell you what's happened with this hack and how you can protect yourself. If you have an Android phone, well. You'll have to stay tuned. There's a camera hack that uh, lets hackers in to see what's going on in your phone. Take pictures, GPS. Yes. Ooh. All that and more. So let's talk about another hack. Have you subscribed to Disney Plus? Well, I know you two nerds have. Like knee deep into Flight of the Navigator. Yes. Watching Darkwing Duck again. Anyway. Aristocats. Days into the launch, hackers have literally hacked thousands of users got their account details, and are now selling these compromised accounts on the dark web. Which, if you want a deal on Disney+, Plus, go to the dark web. You can, find Graham's, you can find Graham's account there. <laughs> so what's, what's going on here? Like, how, why is it so easy for them to... Like, it's Disney. You think they had a few bucks to... It's not Disney's fault, though. It's no? lazy it's people. people. Lazy people. Lazy people. And so what? They're guessing people's passwords? Yeah, because they're putting password as their password. No. Is that how they're getting it? Yeah, in a lot of cases, they've also got previously existing lists that have been stolen from other places. All they're doing is just really quickly running a check. Does this work? Great. This is a valid account. Sign in. Yep. Right. So they've got your email address from another hack. Yeah. This and they're is... just running passwords that you might have had for that. Yeah, so this is a little like the iCloud incident that happened a few yes. years ago that everyone was all up in arms about Apple being the problem. And it was like, no. Friend, you actually use the same password for iCloud as you used for site XYZ over here that had... Sketchy shopping site. <laughs> yeah, had Swiss cheese for a security system. Yeah. And so, again, this kind of goes back to what I was saying before the break, which was, for crying out loud. So it's a numbers game. <laughs> use a better password. So Disney, Disney did an okay job. They've done an okay job. Well, so it, they had 10 million signups in the first day. And they had 10 million subscribers in the first day. Yes. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. They were, they were expecting 10 million by the end of the year. Whoops. They got it in the first day. <laughs> That's why it's not working half the time. Uh, it's yeah. been working pretty good. I, was, I, was I, say, I know I'm teasing. It has. Yeah. Yeah. It that, that first day was a bit sketchy. I watched it at 9.30 in the morning because I took the day off to watch Star Wars. Right. And it worked flawlessly for me. Next time, just come to work and I'll let you watch it. <laughs> okay? <laughs> for God's sakes. Yeah. But, uh, I mean... Here's the thing is, obviously, this is a sought-after service. The question is, are you going to pay 3 to $11 for something that has the first month free anyway, and then is 9 bucks a month? Like, no, really? but I mean, you go on the dark web, you can get it for like 3 bucks. Yeah. Unlimited for... But like, how would they ever know? Well, I mean, how do you know if your account's been compromised? You don't. Uh, so they do have, have a system where you can see where you are logged in. Yes. Right? Okay. So, um, but who's checking that? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Well, because well, you're yeah, a nerd. Your password's strong, though. <laughs> that, that's true. Yeah. And so, I, I mean, going back to the strength of passwords, um, if you are on uh, a Mac or iOS, use the password generator there to create unique passwords for you. If you're not, uh, LastPass, 1Password, great piece but of software out of But shouldn't Disney have uh, put two-factor authentication? I think they should, Yeah. right? Um, so we can get swim hop, s s SIM swap hacked afterwards? <laughs> That's right. They, and th this is it. It's the arms race, right? Yeah. We're, we're up against people that are constantly going to try to be trying to be stealing our information. You know, yeah. they say information is the currency of the 21st century. Well, of course people are going to try to steal that currency. But again, 
guess Disney didn't put two-factor authentication just to make this as simple as possible. Well, and to be fair, they made the service available on literally every platform possible. And that might just be yeah. logistically a I, nightmare. I think I can to- get it on my Game Boy from, <laughs> <laughs> from the 90s. Uh, so what can we tell our uh, listeners slash viewers here? You got to have different passwords for different things. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because it's a numbers game. Like 10 million new subscribers for Disney Plus in the first day. The hackers are just chunking through these accounts, trying to match it up with previously hacked accounts and just trying the passwords. Yeah, because like like Graham said, these are lists that people buy and, tr- and they trade and sell on the internet like um, like it's candy. Yeah. You know, these are very simple to gather spreadsheets filled with emails and passwords. I mean, even if you have to use the same password on every site, just add a plus symbol and the name of the site after it, which is something you'll probably be able to remember, and that would make you more secure than using the same darn password everywhere. Now the hackers know that trick. Now the hackers know. <laughs> <laughs> I've given away a trade secret here. Uh, yeah, but it's interesting. Like, I wonder how far along, uh, you know, if you buy one of these hacked accounts, like, how many months could you go with that? That's what I don't get because I think because I know Disney like they're even allowing you to share passwords. Well, they're looking the other way. Yeah. yeah so explain, now. explain to the listeners what that means. So my girlfriend lives in another city. Yes. And across the lower mainland for me. And I've given her my Disney Plus login. So she I, should have her own, though. Sure, but we're mostly watching it together, so it's handy just to be able sure, to sure justify it all you want, Beeler. <laughs> so, so this is this is an interesting. Thing. This is one of the ways that you can find out if your account is being used by someone else is looking at your most recently watched. Yeah. Um. And so I had I had an issue with this with Crave where I was you know turning on my Crave and there were things that I would never pick to watch showing up in my Crave list. And I thought a lot of, a lot of Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> yeah. And someone someone's hacked my account, and so I put a passcode on it. And, and it stopped it, but then I got home and realized it was my cat stepping on my Apple TV remote. Because <laughs> I was co- coming home to a login failed screen and I went, there's the culprit right there in gray. That's the explanation for all the hacked Disney Plus accounts. It's Graham's cat. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk Google. They've got... Uh, a new uh, news program for you to uh, check out. And if you've got an Android phone, stay tuned. Hackers have found a way to get into your camera. We'll tell you how to uh, fix that. Let's talk now about Google. They've got uh, your news update service for Google Assistant. So uh, pretty well, everyone's got Google in some form or fashion with their Google Homes or their Google Android phones. Explain what your news update is. So uh, we talk about Alexa a lot. Yeah. And Alexa has something called a flash briefing. This is basically a, a service. You go into the Alexa app, you choose from a giant list of uh, content providers and say- Like CKNW? Right. Yeah. And you can say, I want to get the latest you know, one or two minute blurb from that provider. And you can build out basically your own custom news program. And that's been one thing that's been lacking for me on the Google side is that ability. So I love, when I get up in the morning, I have my- my Echo Show, when I cancel my alarm, that triggers the routine that launches my flash briefing. So it gives me my news update. I haven't even got out of bed yet. <laughs> and makes you depressed for the rest of the day. <laughs> well, you choose the right sources and the happy news. Yes. Okay, so how is this different or is it the same? It's it's, it's a little different. Um, what this does actually is it, it basically follows and listens to your your patterns it knows what, what, when you're logged into Chrome, for example, it's knowing what you're doing and where you're going. And it helps to uh, formulate an opinion about what it thinks you might be interested in learning about from a news perspective. They have a lot of uh, news providers. So you're not picking them? It's picking them for you? Well, it's picking the original template for you. And then yeah. you can go in and customize and turn things Got off it. and on. Okay. Right. But but the neat thing about it, though, is it's actually based on your uh, browsing habits which I think might be kind of interesting to see what it thinks I might be interested in from a news perspective. Fair. Yeah, the Google algorithm will be deciding what I get to listen to. I would love to see Graham's <laughs> Google <laughs> News Briefing. Nothing but cats all the way down. I'm, I'm using Apple News right, right now. And so I, um, I had some, uh, some uh, Alexa units in my house. Uh, they're currently unplugged. Because uh, I, you know, I've seen the ring come on every once in a while and I'm like, I, uh, I'm not feeling good about this. So I, so I unplugged them. 
Um, I, I've recently got a HomePod that I'm trying out right now to see because I like I like the voice activation. But the one thing that I was finding is um, the, the the spoken flash briefing for me was a little intrusive, right? Because if you've got multiple people in one house and somebody's getting up earlier than the other person, I live in an open concept place. Uh, you know, everybody's getting that flash briefing at this point. Graham lives in a van. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Chrysler Magic Wagon. Thank you concept very much. Van. Yeah. Um, and, That's and, a good point, though. Yeah. So, so you know, I, I get up in the morning and Apple News does something very similar where it takes a look at the sources that you like and then presents you with a custom news feed, which I read on my iPad. And quite frankly, before I've had my first coffee, <clears throat> I don't want to hear anyone's voice. So, you know, Alexa, Siri, do we have a name for She's just OK, Google? Yeah, no, I don't know. I think Google needs some personality on that one. Okay, Google goes. But on. the flash briefing on Alexa actually, you get the the audio from the source yes. channel, right? Yeah. So you'll get uh, the CKW news briefing, which is one of the ones I get. Yep. So it's Gordon McDonough. Yep. And I hear him in the morning talking about whatever's happening in Vancouver. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Usually, I mean, that's that's post coffee for me, so yeah, that would be okay. And you like his voice. Yes. It makes you happy. That's right. Uh, how so do, how, so are, are they putting ads into this? Uh, not yet. Said, yeah. No. Well, I mean, eventually. Yeah. So I just wonder how like these uh, content providers make money then. Is it a way to draw people? Exposure. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that and five bucks will get me a latte at Starbucks. I was going to say, I tried to pay my mortgage and exposure. They don't, they don't <laughs> no, take it. No. no conversion there. So do you think this is uh, basically a comeback to... Well, I, I counter Google or Alexa flash briefings. I think so. Yeah, because yeah. I, I think it's it's definitely one thing that uh, I haven't been compelled to use my Google Home uh, Mini for uh, because I, I really like that feature on 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 the Alexa. It's kind of table stakes at this point. So if you don't have this, yeah. your smart assistant is not quite what some people want it to be. Well, and the thing is, the flash briefing is sort of the gateway drug to the Alexa skills marketplace as well, right? right. So um, that might be something else that uh, Google might be looking at doing as well. I'm surprised they're not there. I, me too. You know, it, you, they've, they, you know, they've been around longer, but Alexa's sort of been at least, or Amazon's been a little bit better at sort of pushing those things because there was a lot of talk about developing skills, the flash briefing stuff, and the, the lack of tools and resources for people that want to do that for their businesses or their media outlets, that type of thing. And then Amazon just sort of came out of nowhere with a whole bunch of stuff to make it super easy to do. And yet Google doesn't have anything like that yet. It's kind of curious because Apple has their shortcuts app. Yes. Right. Where you can build your own stuff, which feels very Android to me. Yeah. Right. You know, I did like, go ahead and, you know, automate this to do that and do this and that. And it's very, very handy. And I've built a ton of shortcuts that I have my custom uh, Siri triggers for. Yes. Um, and seeing that Google is not there in that space right now, it's it's weird. It feels like everything's backwards, cats and dogs living yes. together, mass hysteria. I'm not sure where I am right now. You're on the app show. <laughs> Let's uh, talk about Android phones now and a new camera hack. John, give us the details. So it was recently revealed that there's a flaw in the the native Android camera app that would allow rogue apps to record video and audio using that app. So has this actually been out in the wild? Are there actually apps that are doing this or they're just testing, they've tested this? Well, it's out in the wild. And one of the research companies that sort of exposed this, they actually created a proof of concept weather app to see how this flaw would work. And they were able to do a lot of things with this app and that, that they didn't actually have permission to do. Things like take pictures, record videos, uh, regardless of whether the phone was locked or not, um, or the screen was off, or the app was even closed. So your screen could be off. Yeah. And they have access to turn on your camera and record and uh, shoot photos and video. So, so this is the, the nightmare bug. Right. This is the yeah. one that everybody talks about. Hi, Anna, my phone's listening to me and uh, Facebook always seems to know what I'm talking about and I'm getting weird ads for things. This is the one. Yeah. Um, it goes further though. Yeah. <laughs> it can acquire your GPS data embedded to any of those photos or videos. Oh, sweet Jesus. It can eavesdrop and record any phone conversations you have while capturing images and video. It can silence the camera shutter to make it harder to detect, transfer any photos and videos on the device to an attacker controlled server and list and download JPEGs and, and MP4s stored on your phone's 
memory card if you have one. And it, it does this in kind of an interesting way, right? So at the core of this bug, basically what it's doing is it is sort of borrowing the permissions that are in the camera app and applying them to this other app. Yeah. Uh, this is this is kind of a. But how could it do that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like it shouldn't that's be major, able to. That's a major flaw. And and there are a number of ways to deal with apps that do this. You know, um, the the good programming way is if an app doesn't have permissions, it doesn't get to access this thing. But unfortunately, this this bug in the camera app essentially was extending those permissions through to these apps. It's through. like holding the door open at the back of the club. That's right. And and so this is the type of thing that. Google is probably horrified happened. Um, they have pushed out an update, which yes. is good. So if, you, if you're if you on a Google phone or an Android phone that um, is still eligible for updates, we have to say that because most Android phones are only getting 18 months of updates. Um, so most modern uh, uh, Google phones are getting it. Uh, Samsung's fixed it. The question though is if you've got another manufacturer's brand and they're using a modified version of the um, camera APK, which is that software bundle, uh, we don't know if your your software has been fixed yet. And, and this is a, a common problem that happens where older devices get exploited because they can't even be patched. Yeah. Right. Because and there's millions of them. Right. And I mean, so here's the thing: this is not just an Android thing, right? Like uh, on iOS, we've got this new check rain vulnerability that on anything older than about two years ago, uh, you can bypass a lot of the security. It's a, it's a jailbreak. Uh, which even is a, for the latest iOS. Even for the latest iOS, iOS 13. So it's if a you're hardware issue. On an, an iPhone 10 or earlier. Yeah, uh, check rain can can do a bunch of stuff. You can jailbreak it. You can break the iCloud lock. All sorts of crazy stuff. We talked about this a couple weeks ago, and it's not great, but you know, hardware problem, right? The problem here is that we've got sort of a combination of hardware age and software vulnerability, where anything over a certain time, you're not getting that support. And I think Android users have to start to come together and say, we deserve better. Um, you know, Google has started to address this in a, in a couple of ways by uh, offloading some of the components into the Google Play Store, right? So they can update these apps without having to update Android. Yeah. Um, so this is one of the reasons why I think we're starting to see this being addressed on some of these devices. But when we're looking at the volume, we're looking at hundreds of millions of phones. And the problem also can come down to the carrier too, because the carrier can stop those updates being pushed out, like security updates and things like that from very specific carriers. This reminds me of my old BlackBerry. Yeah. Right? You know, I, it's funny, I had a BlackBerry Storm, which I think is to this day, probably the biggest cross I've had to bear in the digital world. And I have one in my closet. <laughs> and it was one of those things where I was, I was loading beta software from somewhere in Europe just to get bug fixes so the phone would function properly. Yeah. Uh, because... You know, certain carriers who will remain unnamed here in Canada wouldn't let us have that update. Um, Apple did an amazing job of separating the carrier from operating system updates with the iPhone. It's one of those like great liberation moments where everyone should be happy about it. Yeah. And unfortunately, Android has sort of backslid into this place where certain carriers have locked things down. That, that's one of the problems I had recently. I have an older uh, phone, an Android phone. I was going to give to a friend who who broke their phone. And I looked at it and I'm like... I can't update this to something within the last two years from a security standpoint. If I give you this phone, you're going to get hacked. <laughs> and I will be listening to you <laughs> wherever you go. I, I, just, I, I didn't feel good giving it to her because I was concerned about what I was giving her, especially as someone that's not technically inclined. She's going to just have troubles with it, I think. So I, I didn't end up giving it to her. She ended up getting a new phone instead. So but. what's the lesson here for uh, listeners out there right now that have an Android phone who don't want their camera spying on them or listening to their phone calls. Obviously, uh, I mean, take a look at how old the phone is. And if it is eligible for an update, update that software. Um, if it's not... Maybe it's eligible for an upgrade. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm going to float one last sort of thing for you here. Is it time for us to turn to the Canadian government and say, we need you guys to talk to software manufacturers to put some things in place to make sure that we're protected? No, they're going to lower our cell phone bills, remember? Okay, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but, uh, you know, can governments get involved in that and legislate I, technology? I think they, they, they can, right? Yeah. And they have in the but past. they wouldn't even know where to begin. 
maybe that's part of our job is to explain to the people in charge that, hey, you know what, again, we've talked about information being the currency of the digital age. We have deposit protection on our bank accounts. We've got lots of things in place that protect Canadians all over the country. And it won't stifle innovation to turn to these companies and say, you have to do more to protect us. You owe us that. We're going to have to take a break, guys. Uh, so just again, for the listeners, upgrade your Android phone. <laughs> update Con- or upgrade. Yeah, yeah. Update continually because that helps uh, get rid of some of these these issues. Don't forget to visit our website, getconnectedmedia.com. It's got both of our shows, uh, Get Connected, and also the app show, video and audio podcasts, and so much more. It's pretty awesome. Uh, before we get to the uh, apps, uh, the game app and uh, John's app pick of the week, have you seen that new Apple case? It's a uh, it's a battery case for the new iPhone 11s, uh, but it also has a dedicated camera button. I love this. I absolutely love this. And it's funny because my iPhone 11 Pro has amazing battery life. Like it's the it's the first iPhone where I looked at it and went, "Okay, you got me. I'm actually getting through the whole day." So having a battery case is like can take it or leave it. But the one thing that I do like is I kind of like a bit of a thicker, chunkier camera. Right, point shoot cameras are great. And so you, you pointed this out, this thing has a camera button on it, which I think is such a cool addition to a nice piece of hardware. I haven't tried it yet, so I'm hoping it just, you click it and it takes a picture. You well, don't have to. That's what they're saying. Even if the phone is locked, if the screen is off, you literally hold it up, shoot, and it takes the picture for you. I'd rather they just sold that as a case without the battery. Because <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the battery packs that Apple makes with their cases. Uh, it looks like your phone is a little... Well, you, you, think you, you said it before. It's like your phone has a tumor. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a tumor. <laughs> I, I might have been a little harsh there, but it, it adds some bulk to the to the phone. It does. It's though. got a little hump on the back. But but like you said, Graham, it actually gives you a little bit meatier thing to grab onto to take the pictures. Yeah. And it triples the battery life. Also has Qi charging built into it. So you can charge. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't yeah, know yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just drop it on your, on your yeah. charger. I take it all back. I'm getting one. <laughs> I'm getting one. But it's got a bit of a price tag. 160 bucks Canadian? 179. 179. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's get to some apps here. Uh, You've got a game app of the week. I do. I don't know if you guys saw the new um, Sonic trailer that came out for the movie. For the movie. Yeah. Yeah, They made they made Sonic Sonic again. Yeah. Less scary. The first one was horrifying. Uh, So we have Sonic Racing on Apple Arcade. Um, You know, Sonic is uh, he's a hedgehog that runs around quite fast. So it makes perfect sense that they put him in a car. Yes. Anyway, it's like Mario Kart, and you've got all the people from the, the Sonic universe, uh, including Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Dr. Robotnik, and everyone else. And basically, it's Mario Kart with Sonic. It's free with your Apple Arcade su- subscription. Go play it. How much is that again a month? Uh, it Six is bucks? five ninety nine a month. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, John, your pick of the week. So <laughs> we've, we've, we have the slow fee with yep. the new iPhones. Yeah. Yep. Now we have the spell fee. Right? Spell fee. The selfie from space. Oh, you just blew my mind. Okay. So uh, in partnership with Airbus, who actually has satellites up in the sky, uh, they have this app called Spelfy. Go to spelfy.com. You can download it for Android and iOS. And it's really right now, it's meant for large events and gatherings. Concerts and stuff. Concert, music festivals, uh, that kind of thing. Sporting events. Outside. Outside. So what it does, the app will actually track and show you where the satellites are and when they're going to be flying overhead to take that photo of your big event. So you can actually get an alert and the app will tell you, okay, look up and, you know, smile, smile, wave, <laughs> and it'll take a photo from the sky, assuming it's a nice day. It won't work on a cloudy day. But it, it doesn't see your face. No, because it's from 36 kilo- 36,000 kilometers up in the air. But it sounds really cool. Because what people have been doing is they've actually, like, on beaches in uh, various places, they've been spelling out words with a big gathering of people. So they, they'll write, like, help us <laughs> yeah. on the island, right? <laughs> so Gilligan and this crew can get off the island. No. Um, but it's very cool because it actually will time things and you'll know when it's coming. Uh, right now, it's only for these events, but they're working on updating the app in the new year so that you can actually do it in your own backyard. Very okay. cool. Spellfee. Spellfee.com. Spelfy.com. That's all the time we have left. I want to thank the whole gang, Christina, John, Graham, and Stephen for putting the show together. We're signing off. See you again next time.